Good afternoon, Cube community, and welcome back to Los Angeles, California. We are midway through a full day of coverage here at Teradata Possible. My name is Savannah Peterson. Really been having a great time with Rob Streche all day. We're getting smarter. We've got fun guests, energy. Yeah, yeah and we're talking about, a lot about the product, which, you know, I'm a product geek, so this, this really energizes you, me. You, a geek? I, I, you know, a little bit. A little <laughs> tiny, 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 tiny Beer, bit. sports, and, and product. And data. And Yeah, and data, and data, and data. exactly. I, I love it. Well, our next guest is, is fabulous. We won't make an assumption about her geek status. Hillary, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to talk to you. You are a Cube veteran. You should be sitting over I here am. on the same side. I am. I don't Rami. know. I don't know if I'm ready for that yet, but, uh, <laughs> but I'm, I'm buckled up. I'm ready to go. I love that. You yeah. came up to the desk with enthusiasm. I want to roll <laughs> with that. When I asked you what you were most excited about, it was the new collaboration with NVIDIA That's right. that was just announced today. Just announced. We haven't actually unpacked it too much here on the show yet, so why don't you give us a lay of the land and why it's such a big moment? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, Teradata is known for so many things, but one of the biggest things that we're known for is our ability to scale with massive amounts of data and analytics. And who better than NVIDIA and Teradata to come together to help our customers with large language models in this new era of AI. And so NVIDIA and their GPUs are going to help our customers scale beyond what they're able to do today um, with large language models. But I like to say that we're size inclusive, and so we think of large language models, medium language models, small language models that can be tailored specifically for what some of our customers want to be able to do, and super efficiently, right? I think that's a very important aspect as well. Well, I was going to say, I, I think, you know, we, we talked back in Orlando last year, and we were talking about being efficient and how mm -hmm. the software, you, you were maniacally focused on efficiencies because it used to run on hardware in somebody's shop, and you right. were packed more into there, and that really translated to the cloud and mm -hmm. translated to CPUs in the cloud. It would, it would assume that that efficiency would also benefit on GPUs as well, absolutely. to get more work done. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, um, the, the whole collaboration with NVIDIA started with our engineering teams um, coming together. Uh, NVIDIA has some folks, uh, very smart folks in their team who know a lot about Teradata. They know how we scale, that, that we maximize every single um, aspect of an environment before we are hungry for the next piece of an environment. And um, they, when we talk about scale, they know what we were talking about. We're talking about petabytes and petabytes of data. We're talking about thousands of models running at enormous scale. And so um, they were very excited. And our team obviously was very excited. Um, NVIDIA is kind of the, the buzz of the week, right? And I think there's uh, huge opportunities um, for us to help our customers, not just pilot and POC um, AI projects, but really get them into production um, and, and help our customers differentiate themselves. I think that's a huge piece of the puzzle. How long have you been if you're allowed to share, how long has this collaboration been in the works? Uh, super double secret. Um, I'd have to like you know swear on a, on a stack <laughs> of something. No, we've we've been talking to them for a little while now. I think um, the, the our as I said, our engineering teams got together and uh, it became clear that this was a great mutual opportunity for us and for for our customers. So so let's kind of dive in a little bit on the BYO model, yeah. uh, you know, large language model. Sounds very chic when and you it's, say it's it like what that. happens when engineering names something. I uh, you know. BYO, large language models, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. or beer, whatever works. Yes, yeah. Or beer, <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, we, a little both, because <laughs> yeah, you know, right. sometimes you're dealing yeah. with the data and you're trying to figure it out. No, but, exactly. But, so, again, it, it makes a lot of sense to me. It's going general availability very soon, I believe. Yeah. And it, why that? Because I think, again, NVIDIA actually has a very similar thing where they have their own models, but they also you know, bring your own model and things like that, right. so that collaboration. Also with all of the other people who are around here, the Googles, the AWSs, mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft, I almost forgot them, but yep. I can't forget them. Everybody's got their models, so mm -hmm. it, ma it makes a lot of sense. And it makes a lot of sense, I guess, to your customers, and you correct me or point me in the right direction here, that they want choice and they want optionality and like you said, not just on which model, but the size of that model and how they fine tune it and things like that. That's right, yeah. I, and so I think that um, our customers, right, who are the global 10,000 market, highly regulated markets, they really want to be able to manage their own environments. They're not going to be putting data out there in the public domain. Um, and so they want to, to be able to bring their own large language model. They want to be able to customize it and tailor it, maybe make it small or medium size. They want to bring context. Customer context really matters 
um, in the era of AI. And so, you know, if you've done, I'm sure you've played with ChatGPT and, and numerous others, um, if it doesn't have the right context of what you're looking for, it completely fails. And the same applies in the, in the uh, enterprise commercial space, right? If, if you don't understand your customer, um, uh, I was talking to uh, Nita, who's here from NVIDIA, and he was talking about uh, an example where if a doctor is if, you, if you're getting a new prescription, you're like, Am I, can I take this prescription? Is that okay? You, know, you go to your pharmacist and the pharmacist says, oh, that, 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 that'll interfere with something else that you're already taking. Well, if you have a large language model do that and they don't know what else you're taking, it lacks the context to help you be successful as a medical agent, right? And so the context that our customers can bring to those large language models and, and make them customized, tailored, maybe medium language models, allows them to deliver that value to the customer in a way that's super tailored to that individual. You just touched on something I, I, we haven't had a chance to talk about today that is absolutely critical. It is context. Mm -hmm. And I think context is what makes AI real. That's what makes it feel real. It's what makes people feel happy. It's, it, it's a whole thing. When it comes to healthcare, we're talking about an extremely regulated, highly sensitive right. data environment. How, how, can, how, how can you apply the right context without revealing too much information, keeping that sensitive, but still empowering that end user? Yeah, well, I mean, I think the, the first piece, right, is bring it into your own environment, run it in Teradata, where you can bring your own large language model, use NVIDIA, um, use their chip processing to be able to do that, apply the customer-specific data in a secure way, right? And then I think in most of these areas right now, we're still seeing human running the loop, right? Mm -hmm. So the human is actually the one, it's the nurse or it's the, the agent yeah. on the phone who's making the final decision, is this really the right medication for you to be taking? I did, we will at some point be at a place where perhaps robots are running everything. I don't think we're quite there right now. Certainly from a regulation perspective, I don't think you can point to the robot in the corner and be like, it's his fault. So I think you really need to make sure that humans are running the loop um, for some of these critical decisions. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe for a customer service issue where, you know, nobody literally dies, it's probably a little bit, you know, lower stakes. Um, but context matters for customer centricity as well. You know, I don't yeah. want to be treated as somebody who doesn't have a mortgage with you as a bank. If I have one, I want you to like acknowledge that and love me for that, right? And, and not try to sell me another mortgage because I'm like, well, I already have one with you. I only have one house, right? So I think that's, that context really matters and the personalization that that context gives is super critical. Yeah, and I, I think that to me is where, where the rubber meets the road is really mm -hmm. the use cases that mm -hmm. you guys are focused on and you've really delved into. And we were just talking about some customer complaint analysis yeah. examples. And I, I think when you start to you know, work backwards from the customers about this, you're also putting functions into the database and things of that nature. Because data preparation is a big a big piece of it, because garbage in, garbage out, to, right. to our earlier discussion off air about rocks right. and, you know, <laughs> in and baking, pizza, and baking. Pizza, yeah. pizza, <laughs> pe you know. I'm still not over it, my I, teeth are still I, 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 Your dentist just feels unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, everybody's experienced hallucinations or bad answers. Mm -hmm. Do you see when you're talking to these customers, because like you said, they're some of the largest on the right. planet, they're governments, they're everything. Mm -hmm. They don't want hallucinations. They don't want that. And what we see is the, you know, there's large language model with trillions of parameters, but that small, as you go out, the mediums and the smalls mm -hmm. are really the long tail of That's inference. Right. Is that where you see Teradata really helping these organizations with those specific use cases? Yeah, and I'll go back to what you said up front, right? Which is that data really matters. And you know, our, our customers at Teradata are pretty known for having their gold standard data in Teradata. And that is the richest, most accurate, best contextual data on the planet right now for the global 10,000. So if you're starting with that asset, and then if you choose to move forward with uh, bring your own large language model or medium small language model um, with Teradata and the NVIDIA announcement, you have the ability to take this pure, rich data that is super boiled down to the essence of what's running your business and apply that to a large language model. No, you're still going to have to refine it and tune it. You're still going to have to test it. If in a highly regulated market, you're still going to want a human in the loop uh, in charge of some of those um, last mile decisions. Um, but certainly we believe that that is the direction that our customers are going to take. We already see them. You saw the complaint analyzer moving in that direction of a refined um, medium sized model, if you will. Um, and then I think you know we could talk a little bit about the environmental impact of going from a large language Let's model talk to that. a small or medium language model, which I think is another reason, um, both from an ESG perspective, but also just from a practical, how much do you want to pay for compute perspective, right? I think those are probably two vectors that we think about. 
I, I'm curious actually about that journey because you know, with the hype and the relatively inflated conversation around mm -hmm. Gen AI right now, as, and and with Nvidia being the darling that it is, yes. providing the compute power mm -hmm. for for a lot of folks. I, I think that we we forget about these other size and scope models that we can go to. When you're helping customers and your community navigate this journey, is is that one of the things you're coaching on a lot? Or do people realize they could be using these any size models within Teradata already? Mm -hmm. What are those interactions like? Yeah, I think we're on a journey, right? And we're yeah. I think we're at, you know, 0.0, .0 in the journey, if we think about it. I think of the internet in the early days, and, mm -hmm. and you know, when you saw people who were like, oh, I'm going to put up a giant JPEG that takes forever to download, and a phone number, and now I have a website, go me. Um, and I think that's really kind of where we are, a very nascent level for some of the, the Gen AI stuff out there. Um, but nonetheless, I think it's super exciting, and, and we see people, sometimes they stub their toes, and sometimes they find new paths forward, um, but certainly in the past, the the agility and the response time that we're seeing is hyper close. It's really, really fast, faster than any of these other technologies that we've seen come through the front door. Um, and I think that's because they're transformational, right? It truly is a transformational experience that you're having. Um, if we just um, circle back on the, the sort of environmental impact, though, I think mm -hmm. reducing from a large language model to a small or medium obviously takes a lot of compute off the table. It, it saves money, saves the planet, which I think is, is double good. Yeah. Um, and it also means that you can start to get your arms around the context very quickly. Um, I was reading in the, the Wall Street Journal had a podcast last week where they talked about um, a Google search versus a ChatGPT question, same question, 10x yeah. on ChatGPT and compute. Right, yeah. it's going to cost you ten times as much Ow. in compute to do that. Yeah, didn't you say so, it's two so glasses of water so every five it's queries or something? So it's sixteen ounces of yeah. water for every five prompts Isn't in ChatGPT. Yeah, insane. Yes, that and, is and insane. so it, it has all kinds of impact. And right. I mean, you also have to think that they're also going out and retraining the model, retraining everything, and all right. of that, and that that is even more intensive right. than even the actual prompts. And to that, I, I think one of the things that's really interesting that's been announced and actually kind of built in, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm not sure that it was really announced, announced, but yeah. it's, it's there, is connecting all the different data types and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're kind of bringing the AI to the data Right. and in Teradata, and you know, not forcing people to move all their data from somewhere else to there. That's right. That that's, would seem like a good strategy, especially with cloud being part of that, but also the fact that you have partners that are on the edge and people who are in compartmentalized and other type stuff. Is that really what you see as people are really kind of data meshing things together in the back end to make their AI better? Yeah, we certainly see people getting to data wherever it is, and, and we have a product called Query Grid, which lets our customers get to data wherever it is, and if you want to do remote push down processing, you can do that, um, which is very efficient. You don't have to uh, relocate the data to do that, um, and, and that has been something that from an advanced analytics perspective has been fantastic for our customers. Extend that out to Gen AI use cases, and I think it's even better, because a lot of that unstructured data is sitting elsewhere, right? You're not, it's not in a highly uh, structured environment. Um, so being able to get to that data, use that data, really important. But then to be able to extract what's useful and going to be meaningful on a, on a near real time basis from now till next week is something you can bring back and store in Teradata through, through a vector, right? As right. sort of a data type. And we think that's also really exciting. And then understanding the distance between vectors to know what trend line or like what direction are you going in um, is also like a great way to take large language models, reduce it down to some vectors, understand the distance, and use that as a very lean aspect of, of the model that you're building out. So another exciting use case. Super exciting. Uh, you know, You've really brought the passion and the energy and the excitement. I'm curious, taking off your, well you can, you can still wear this <laughs> hat. But, but also, well, we, all, we all have a little caffeine, especially in the afternoon. But, but in your human hat, mm -hmm. since you get to see so many of these exciting applications, what has you most personally excited mm -hmm. about our AI future mm -hmm. and some of the solutions you might be able to deliver? Yeah, so uh, I, I am very thoughtful, because uh, I keep talking about the environmental impact, right? I'm very thoughtful about you know, what, what the impact is to the, to the planet. I think we, we heard Microsoft last week is bringing up Three Mile Island, right? To sort of offset some of the power needs out there, which is both exciting and, and, and remarkable, right? It, it I is, think it's, it's remarkable. Kind of yeah. Um, 
And so what does that mean for us over the next 20, 30, 40 years? Uh, I think efficiency really matters. Um, I think use cases really matter. Mm -hmm. um, and I think being able to um, do something that scales efficiently is probably going to be the big unlock. Now everybody's in the sandbox playing a lot right now, right? They're having a great time. Yes. Um, but when I think about my kids and their future, I'm like, we should be really thoughtful about how we deploy these new technologies, both from a safety perspective and from an ESG perspective, so that they can invent incredibly exciting new things in the decades to come and mm -hmm. have the power to do that. I think that's important. I'm curious. So. Well, how old are your kids before I ask this question? Uh, 17 and 19. Oh, nice. Yep. Okay, so Shout out, hey boys. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Shout out from all of us here on theCUBE. Your mom's doing great. You should be very proud. What's the conversation like around the dinner table with your family? Oh, gosh. About AI. Yeah, so, I mean, they're old enough now to understand, really understand some of the technology, but they're also in classroom environments where teachers are, I mean, I, I am so empathetic to teachers right now, right? They are trying to figure out how oh gosh, do you who use was, I this felt new that technology. When you said that. Yes. Yeah. Oh my goodness, and you worry about like cheating, but you also want to train the kids on how to use the technology. Right. And I think, um, you know, we talk about how great uh, a thought partner uh, AI can be and chat GPT can be. But at the end of the day, you have to take your own ideas and, and being human, the humanness that we bring is going to be our differentiation to the computers. And so my, my older son is in college. I'm like, take some philosophy. You know, take some psychology, understand, he's a super like math science geek. I'm like, take yeah. some of these other classes because your ability to understand the, the nerdy stuff combined with what it is, take some religion classes, like understand ethics and, and mm -hmm. right and wrong and, and how to be human around this technology that, that is Pandora's box in all the great ways and some of the scary ways too, really be thoughtful about that. So we, we talk a little bit about kind of good use, bad use, um, yeah. what's fair, what's right, um, and those are really interesting conversations. Super interesting. Yeah. I'm coming over for dinner. Rob and I are coming over <laughs> yeah. for dinner. Coming over. At some point, we're coming down to San Diego. I, I, I do think that you just brought up something that's really interesting, too, in, in, in your advice to your son, which I think is fantastic mm -hmm. advice, to, to, to be cross-spectrum there. But I remember talking to Jonathan Ross, who founded Grok, creator of the LPU, inventor of the LPU. It, he's, he, and he said, we're going to have to relearn how we ask questions. Yes. And I think that's essentially what you're right. saying there is you need, we, we have to think, it's not just linear, it's not even just exponential, it's a whole new axis now where you sort of have to come up with entirely new ways of thinking about what could be That's solved, right, that's which right. Which is really and exciting. They are the, uh, Google trained us to be great prompt engineers. Right, and ChatGPT is training us to be even better prompt engineers, mm -hmm. and so and that we bring humanness in that. But outside of that construct, I think being able to think macro and connect the dots—that's something that um, I think humans are also uniquely able to pull in religion and science and politics and you know relationships, um, uh, and that's something that is really important in the relationships our customers have with their customers, right? Is that connectedness and that understanding of context, mm -hmm. right? So we're back in context land. Yes, understanding and empathy, definitely. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. That's yeah. right. Yes, which is the foundation of every single tech conversation we've ever had. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hillary, this has been an absolute blast. Oh, my thank gosh, you thank so you much. so thank much. You. This is I great. had heard you were amazing from Rob earlier today. <laughs> yes, yeah, been talking He wasn't much. lying yeah. to me. Yes. I, I really appreciate yeah. you taking the time. Uh, thank and, you. And shout out again to the family. Yeah. Rob, thanks for being here. Actually, while we're at that, shout out to my family. Hi, Mom. How you doing? Hope everybody is doing great She's wherever amazing. you are. She's amazing. <laughs> oh, she'll love that. Robin yeah. will love that. Uh, and I hope that that all of you are getting the same smile and laughter and inspiration that we are here at Terra Data Possible. Midway through day one, my name is Savannah Peterson here in Los Angeles, California. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.